All right. Well, good morning. It is so wonderful to see all of you. I hope you're having a relaxing and enjoyable summer and staying cool in all of this lovely heat that we're having. Um, today, I want to talk about winning our spiritual battles. Because we need to win our spiritual battles before we win our physical battles or our external battles. And I think the uh, best way to start is with this quote from Ephesians. Nope. <laughs> Let's see, if I keep going, maybe I'll find it. Nope. Mike will fix my problems for me. This is so funny because um, this morning he was like, are you sure you have the right PowerPoint saved? And I was like, absolutely. I only saved one PowerPoint. I'm sure it's the right one. And uh, me and technology have a little thing going on. <laughs> we don't always work together so well. So. Anyway, I'm going to talk about um, putting on the full armor of God. So here it is. Thank you so much. He's a, we're going to talk about this later. But anyway. <laughs> okay, this is from Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 17. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm, then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, which you can with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So most of our battles are actually spiritual ones. I, I recognize in myself that many times I think I'm struggling with something that's happening to me or in the world but if I really think about it, it's not necessarily the thing or the problem in the world that I'm struggling with. It's, it's with my perception of it or my belief in what I can do about it. It's, with, it's within me. And I, I definitely felt that this week. I, I really needed to uh, put on the full armor of God this week. I, I had to change my perspective. Um, I was so looking forward to the summer. It's been a very busy, very long year. We did a lot. Um, we started a school. And uh, I was so looking forward to just not having to do any of that for a while. Um, but it's... Summer is passing, and yesterday I realized it's one month until our first day of school. So I thought, am I ready for that? And I absolutely was not ready for that. <laughs> I, I uh, realized I've been actually, on, not on purpose, unintentionally uh, avoiding thinking about everything that I need to do. So I've had this perspective of stress and overwhelm and fear that I needed to change to one of gratitude and blessing and excitement. But I first had to recognize and accept where I was at in my stress and fear. And I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to admit that I was worried about doing this all over again. 
and everything that I was responsible for. Um, I didn't want to admit that I wasn't actually inspired about the things I had to do. And I just wanted more time to relax. If any of you have asked me how my summer has been so far, which many of you have done, you know, how was Mexico? How was your time in Missouri? I'd be like, it's good. I just wish I had more of it. <laughs> I, I wish it was longer. I, I really, my feeling was I just want to escape for a little bit. Um, it's, it's taken me time to digest and, and feel complete with this year. But reality is, we're never really done. Even if we weren't to do the school again this year, there's many things that I need to do. There's many challenges in life to overcome. And there is no escape from this life. Um, so I, w I was really more in a state of denial. And what I needed to do was first recognize that actually I do feel this way. Um, not deny that. And uh, I'm very fortunate to have really wonderful supportive people in my life and friends and people that I'm working with in the school. I've been talking a lot with Claire and Chelsea and, and with my husband. And I've just finally, but in voicing, people are asking me, well, how am I doing? And in voicing honestly how I'm feeling, I've, I recognize that maybe my fears or worries are a little bit overblown. Maybe it's actually not as stressful as I think it is. Maybe the problems aren't as big as I worry they might be. Um, and that some of the problems I'm, I'm facing are just problems that I'm creating for myself. And so in, in voicing these, I've been able to recognize and accept where I am. And then yesterday, as I took this time to prepare this message and took some time to talk to God, I finally had the words to give to God that this is how I'm feeling. But I recognize that it's not necessarily true. It's not necessarily, what, the way I'm seeing things and the way I'm feeling is not necessarily reality or what is. It's just the way I've been seeing things based on my past experiences or on my emotions and my feelings. And so quickly, when I was able to tell God that, it was just like a, a flip of a switch. And I had this thought come to me. What a blessing to have such an exciting life. <laughs> what a blessing that I have a life to live that I could do so many exciting and meaningful things. And of course, we never know exactly how things are going to turn out or what bumps are on the way, but what a blessing. It's an amazing life adventure. And to spend time with so many amazing people. I get to, I, I, my life is filled with such wonderful and exciting people I get to spend time with. So all of a sudden, I wasn't so super stressed by details, but instead I could feel myself putting on this armor of God. I could switch to a, a perspective that I have a belt of truth. I have the Bible, I have the divine principle, I have God's promises, which my, my heart doesn't always believe are true, but I know is true. I have a breastplate of righteousness. I know that I have been called by God to do the things that I'm doing. I know I'm not doing it out of selfishness. There's righteousness here. I'm fitted with everything I need to do the things I need to do. My feet are fitted with the skills and the uh, empower from God. Especially I've been working on the shield of faith because all these flaming arrows of doubt and fear and, well, what if this happens? I can pick up my, sh my shield of, of faith and the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spear, which is the word of God. What a difference this makes when we put on the armor of God. It, it, made me, it reminded me of Christian's testimony from last week. He shared about uh, the camp journey and how he 
was excited for it, but then he had an allergic reaction and he was just like suffering with itchy eyes and everything, but he remembered something from Reverend Thompson's lecture to put on your life is good glasses, right? And even though I'm sure it was hard still, but, but it, that's something that stuck out and made a difference for him. And I feel like that's, in some ways, you could say putting on the armor of God is like putting on your life is good glasses. It doesn't necessarily change what's happening around me or what the things that I have to do, but it, it's actually the first step in winning the whole battle. Winning the spiritual battle gives me the power to do the things I need to do to win the external battle. But, oh my gosh, have you ever known that you were defeated before you started something? I know that feeling. <laughs> where you feel like you need to do something, but you don't have any confidence to do it, and you already know it's gonna be a failure, but I'll try because I have to, and then it fails, and you wonder, you're not really surprised, right? <laughs> Spiritual battle is the first step. The life is good glasses, the armor of God. Um, another way of looking at it is to put on your see from God's viewpoint glasses. I had to first recognize and accept that my negative pers perspective that I was resisting, and then I was able to shift it fairly easily. But um, this God's viewpoint glasses, if we look into what first went wrong in the beginning with the fall, a lot of things went wrong, but the first thing that went wrong was that the archangel that Lucifer failed to see from God's viewpoint. Failed, he failed to see the whole picture of what God was trying to do. And that he actually had a very important and special, valuable, loving place in that picture. But all he could see at that moment was Adam and Eve are getting all this love and all this attention. His position wasn't what he felt it it used to be. He wasn't getting the love that he felt he deserved. He was unable to see God's hopes for Adam and Eve to mature and become the true loving owners of the world where he would have a special place. He failed to see how God truly did love him and have plans for him. All the other transgressions and problems came out of that failure to see God's viewpoint the actions that happened, the fall that happened, simply because Archangel Lucifer couldn't have his God's perspective glasses or his life is good glasses on. So we, when we're struggling with something, I, I know it's not always so helpful to be like, oh, put on your rosy glasses, you know. Sometimes we're like, Walk a mile in my shoes, and then you'll see how I feel, right? But I, I really like this full armor of God quote because then we're reminded of what are the things we need to do to shift our perspective. When we center our heart and mind on God, and we can, and we can see from God's viewpoint, we can think centered on God's viewpoint, we can act on God's viewpoint, we are putting on the full armor of God. So I have a couple of quotes from our true father, Reverend Moon. Once you have faith and are committed to the fact that in your relationship to father, you are as a son or daughter to him, then nothing can stop you. So again, most of our battles are spiritual ones. It doesn't mean that we don't need to take action. Right? We can't only just spend time in our minds. Right? We have to do the things or make physical effort, but our mindset will strongly influence the efforts we make. I, I really love this quote because it's, it's a heart thing when we can, when we can make that connection to God, right, become more present to the fact 
that we are a child of God. That can shift everything. I think that was partly what I needed to do this week, was remind myself that I am not just a person on earth trying to do things, but I am a child of God, and God has called me to things, and God has equipped me for these things, and God will help me with these things. I just have to do what I know I can do. When we're victorious in our hearts and minds and we're strengthened by God, then we have the strength and power to win whatever battle is at hand. Or digest the loss and try again. Sometimes we don't win the battles. But it doesn't mean that we have failed, right? I think that's important for us to not get down when we feel like we've lost a battle or made a mistake. But even in those moments, with the right perspective, we can digest it and overcome. But if we're fearful in our hearts and do not trust in God's goodness and power in our life, we can give up before we even begin. So I found this true uh, not only this week, but many times in my life. I found this true in my marriage, um, in parenting. I, Mike and I have kind of an interesting marriage story because we were introduced to each other by... Reverend and Mrs. Moon, and we didn't have an initial attraction to each other or a reason <laughs> to know each other or get married to each other. But both of us, we've, we've shared with each other, we both went into this with a commitment and a trust that God is working here. And then based on that commitment, we all of our actions followed that commitment. But I know many people who've gone into relationships, whether or not it was arranged like ours, or even if it was based on attraction, many people go into a relationship with each other with some fear or doubt that maybe this won't work, or this person will betray me, or maybe I will betray this person. And these fears sometimes lead to that reality. But even though Mike and I have almost no reason to actually, outside of our faith and uh, our matching to like love each other, we've created love for each other because of our commitment, our perspective on our relationship based on God's viewpoint. I, I really went through this with my children. Uh, when my twins were about two and, a, two and a half, three years old, I don't know how many of you knew my children when they were three years old, my twins. We weren't living here in Colorado, so most of you don't. They were little terrors, <laughs> but not intentionally. <laughs> they were just who they were. They were three-year-old twin boys who were very loud and very mischievous and very messy, and um, it was a lot for me at the time. And just being with them all day, every day, as their sole caretaker. I mean, Mike was the caretaker too, but I felt the weight of this, and I. Over time, I started to build some resentment towards them. When they would interrupt me, or they would have a fit at the most inconvenient time, I almost felt like they were trying to hurt me. And I was feeling like, they're, these are problem children. <laughs> these, these, they're, how am I gonna raise these children to not be problem children? And, and it was this perspective that over time I was developing like a negative perception of my children that I think affected how I responded to them when they acted out, which only perpetuated it more. So, um, but once I realized that there was a, that I was looking through a certain lens at my children, it was like a shock to me. And I realized this is not necessarily reality. They are not necessarily, actually, problem children. It's just how I'm feeling about it at this moment. And I can shift that perspective, and I, and I put on my life is good and God's perspective glasses, and, I, and it's not like I even had to work really hard over a long period of time to change my perspective. It's almost instantaneous. When I connect to God's viewpoint, I was like, oh, my sweet babies. They're so full of life and energetic <laughs> and enthusiastic. <laughs> 
And it wasn't like the things that they were doing were different, but my, my, my lens, my perspective, my God's viewpoint kicked in. And from that point, I've had a completely different relationship with them. I have moments, but I've never been in this mode of like resenting them or feeling they were difficult children. I've always, since that point, believed that these are special, amazing, beautiful children that God gave to me. So, uh, yeah, I think that that really connects to once, I have, once I'm committed to this fact that I am a child of God and that the people in my life are child, children of God, then, then nothing can stop me from acting in that way. And over time, receiving the benefits of that. Here's a couple of more quotes from our true father. Go with faith. When you do your utmost, God is responsible to help you. So that helped me a lot this week with my shield of, of faith to bounce off all those arrows of fear and doubt. Here's another one. No one has the power to stop or compromise the will of God. And wise people are obedient to that will. Instead of fighting it, they sail with it. And I, I resonate with that because I was definitely trying to fight my responsibilities up until this week. I was like, maybe, I, I even had these thoughts, which I'm ashamed to admit, but I was like, you know what, you know, maybe if the school doesn't happen this year, it doesn't mean I'm a bad person, I mean, we'll just do something else. <laughs> Not that I believe them, but there was this little fears that would come in. And, and I was fighting what I feel God has put on my heart to do. And it, oh, I tell you, it does not feel good to be doing that. And, and even if I did, I, God would work his will another way, right? So it just wouldn't be with me. So um, wise people are obedient to that will, and they sail with it. So these are the uh, things that I've been thinking about this week, but I'm, I, I feel fairly confident that we all go through moments of this in our life. And we have times when we are sometimes feeling like we're resisting what God has put on our heart to do, or that we are fearful about the future, or struggling about how on earth I'm gonna make happen the things I need to do. But I think that we've also all had experiences where we've put on the full armor of God. We've made a commitment and that has changed everything in a certain relationship or in a certain period of our life. So uh, I just want to encourage you that God is our parent in reality, right? Press this quote. Committed to the fact that our relationship to God is that of a son and daughter. I don't just understand that. I don't just believe it. I'm committed to that. And once this realization comes into true reality, it is so very real. And this determines your own heaven. So let's uh, win our spiritual battles. Those are the hardest ones, but they can also be won much more easily if we find God's viewpoint. I've also had experiences of, of spiritual battles that last a really long time because I'm just trying to slug through it with my own willpower or my own knowledge of, or, you know, I'm just getting through it. But we can win our spiritual battles much more quickly and much more powerfully when we put on the full armor of God. We see from God's viewpoint. We put on our life as good glasses. And then things can change in our physical life, our external world, so much more quickly as well. So I hope um, there's something here for you wherever you're at in your life today. And um, please join me in prayer. Heavenly Parent, thank you so much for your consistent, constant, deep love for us. 
I'm sorry that sometimes even I fail to recognize it. It's hard to believe it. But even after times of doubt, whenever I come back to you, I find that it's still there. And it gives me strength and it encourages me and it inspires me. Gives me power for my life, Heavenly Parent. Thank you for your unchanging love. I pray that we can absorb it, we can believe it, but we can then share it and, and help others to find your love as well, Heavenly Parent, through whatever it is that we're doing in our life. We come here today from uh, all different parts of Denver, all different parts of the world, and many of us are going through different experiences, but you know just what we need, Heavenly Parent, and I know that you are trying to find a way to give that to us in our life, whether it is through a special blessing, whether it is through a challenge that we need to work through. Heavenly Parent, you are guiding us in our life, and you care so deeply about each one of us. Each one of us is an irreplaceable, reflection of you that nobody else could could fill heavenly parents so we believe in your love for us and uh, pray that we can manifest that as a reality in our life and share that with our children share that with our parents share that with our whoever it is that we come across in our in our life this week um, we want to offer this time to you and i pray this in my name michael and adonia hendrick a blessed central family amen and adieu okay. thank you so much everyone Thank you.